मैं संगीता भगवान एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर विद यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ मुंबई रिस्पेक्टेड चीफ गेस्ट ऑफ टुडे सेशन सुरेश माने सर कुकी सर अनुप जी माइकल आर दी ऑर्गेनाइजर्स ऑफ टुडेज डेलीब्रेशन एंड माय डियर पार्टिसिपेंट फ्रेंड्स at the very uh, first part of this uh, talk which i want to begin with the introductory aspects only uh, the minute this book came to my hand i just began the first page and that really made me to go to the last part that was the acknowledgement <laughs> and the fact is like why i had to jump directly to the acknowledgement is to know actually what is the author trying to say how much is the author well read But there is one specific statement where she quotes by saying that revolutions come by reading, and is she justifying that statement? Because when when you talk about a writer or author to predict some 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 text which is already being done, and that too when you uh, dare to touch uh, the text of Baba Sahib Ambedkar, an illustration of caste, if you're not well read it, you can't justify it. So the very journey of the book from the start. Begins with all misleading kind of quotations and understandings and so on. Uh, let me be very precise with you. When I went to uh, write from the first part of the page, that is 150 pages of introduction, uh, the very haunting part which should that should come to every other reader. It need not you be a academician or activist or whatever. As a plain reader, a thought should come to your mind that why does annihilation of caste, that to something of Baba Sahib Ambedkar's great work announcement, requires again a reintroduction. And when it has to be a reintroduction, why it should be a kind of a debatable reintroduction wherein you are trying to prove that Gandhi was a saint and Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar talking about caste, the pyramid of caste, and then talking about pollution, purity, and all this kind of thing, which even the speakers right now have all very perfectly put before you. Um, as a reader, I am not saying as an academician, as a reader. A uh, first thing I couldn't understand that the very first page she has began with exactly talking about Malala and then you know giving a story about Sureka both Mange and then she keeps telling that if you have read uh, if you have heard Malala and if you have not read uh, Sureka both Mange then you have to read Baba Sahib Ambedkar. So from there on it begins with exactly talking about how caste, what are the types of problems that the caste have in India, uh, how the hierarchy begins, and then she uh, tries to corroborate this uh, contentions into a different kind of a journey where she comes down exactly to the Banyas, the Vaishyas, and then, then to the corporate sector, uh, coming out with the statistical figures about uh, what, what are the type of uh, discriminations happening in India, and then back to back again coming then talking about colonialization, imperialism, uh, racism, casteism and there are so many things which are completely baffling as a commerce teacher i would always say that if your plate is hipped up with too many dishes you don't know where you have to start with right and if you really begin with having an ounce of everything you're not satisfied okay so when, you, when i talk about as a reader to get the satisfaction and then develop a loyalty as an ambedkar follower i would always have that kind of a loyalty towards what baba said original annihilation of cost is and i don't gel into the interest of understanding or even thinking of digesting what arundhati rai is trying trying to bring it uh, to the audiences say very perfectly when you have to talk about if you hide the name of the author and ask somebody to exactly give the book review of this kind of uh, text which comes out i i guess it should be a critical and a doc which should be based only on arundhati rai's observation it should not be based on exactly bringing out the debate between what gandhi and uh, baba sahib ambedkar because we don't accept the fact that when you talk about caste as a factor uh, which operates in india we do have to say that there is a prevalence of it and there is a statement which says that democracy itself has not removed caste right so when you bring out this contradiction thoroughly i feel that the book entirely is baffling it is not at all giving you a complete juncture of how you can proclaim uh, the observations of caste and then talking about uh, non village to talk in terms of how the caste, uh, caste is outraging uh, second thing which i would like to say is whether the book is relevant when you talk about relevance of a particular book in terms with uh, the the appeal orientation i find uh, from my side at least it has to be a zero kind of relevance Rather trying to you know predict something and bring it before the mass, which is itself is a misleading kind of an approach. That could be one aspect. A uh, second is how would you really go about testifying the book? When you look forward to testify the book, there are certain things which objects me as a reader. Like one particular uh, kind of an uh, thing is there in some part.
part of the book, she's talking about the corporate sectors and all, like, and then the, she has quoted some figures about uh, the Banyas and the Veshas holding the entire uh, corporate market and all, like, and then when you actually, as a reader, plain reader, I say, for example, from my uh, student's point of view, as a commerce student, somebody wants to read it, they carry that notion that, yes, the, the people belonging to the Dalit group are, cannot make up their way up to that level. So there is a specification of this, uh, this, this particular period, uh, this particular stigma of the caste attached to them. Educationally, they are not developed. Discriminations are there. So a kind of a social uh, sympathy will be there. Social sympathy will be there. But gone are the days where we have to look forward to this kind of an support. You have to think in a larger uh, dimension. You have to think from the point of view of how the social, uh, sociological obligations are opening up. And on the next part, when I observe her YouTube, which is all about uh, giving a kind of an uh, talk, a deliberation in the US gathering in Columbia University, in the teachers uh, college forum and all that, the opening kind of a lecture, she begins with is talking about uh, he was helping in the drafting uh, uh, of constitution and all that. In the very first narration itself, she is trying to give a very small space to Baba Sahib Ambedkar. And on the larger dimension, somehow she is looking forward to talk about Gandhi in a very uh, glorious manner. And and uh, the glaring facts are not being opened up. Now, my dear friends, we being a uh, part of this uh, uh, social system, this uh, democratic system, it's not a question of I being an ambedkar, I, I need to talk about, or I need to read about annihilation of Khan. I should not be a part of reading Ga Gandhi. We all are well-learned people, and we have read Gandhi several times, we have read Baba Sahib Ambedkar several times. We are much matured enough to understand the two differences of these personalities. We are much mature to understand what exactly the debate between these two people are. And today's modern juncture also allows and does, does make us to still follow Bhavas of Ambedkar only for the reason that there are so-called folds of the casteism which are completely eating up the so-called uh, development of the economy. So from that perspective, I personally feel that the book does not actually justify what the overall theme of annihilation of caste is. So the objectional part that the very title gives up is something which will not, uh, should not be acceptable. Uh, next thing which comes under my observation is like, as, as an academician I would say, uh, the rest of the part when we talk about annihilation of caste and how it has really percolated, what observation Baba Sahib Ambedkar has, what debate took place between Gandhi and him, and then a few, few synoptical aspects that she has gathered and then she's drawn up in the introductory elements and all that. Right? There should, she is failing to interlink or maybe interlock uh, the, the uh, objectionable aspects which has uh, come up from the observations of uh, Gandhi and Baba Sahib Ambedkar. I personally feel she, she should have been more uh, daring enough, she could have been more bold enough to have a little more good referencing and then allowing to give an equal space to both of them. Like, you know, sensibly talking or giving a name that a saint and a doctor. I mean, precisely, if we are, I just go with this uh, sub theme, a doctor and a saint. I have somebody who is not Ambedkar, I would always believe that Gandhi is somewhere being has to be placed high. And then, you know, uh, the, the ladder has to percolate down to uh, a kind of a follower that has to be Gandhi. Of course, I will not agree with that because you, when you look forward from the point of view of understanding these two personalities together, um, you know, forgetting for a minute uh, about the caste system and all, right? On the intellectual plethora, on the political plethora, on the uh, Hindu uh, fundamentalist uh, angle and all, right? Or the religious angle and all, right? From each aspect, perspectively speaking, predominantly speaking, definitely Baba Sahib Ambedkar will have a larger space which is failing in this particular book which is really uh, making me feel uh, too bad for her, I'm sympathizing her rather, uh, that uh, she should have taken a uh, little care because her name matters when you talk about it. In fact, we should not say that she's a great icon as long as her uh, write-ups are concerned, okay, uh, apart from the God of Small Thing and a book or aspects and other things along. But when it comes to this particular book, she has somewhere failed to give a proper appropriation for the book. And thank you so much for allowing me. Thank you, man. Uh, we have uh, for this seminar or discussion people coming from all over India, but not just Maharashtra or just